You and I are about to head off on a journey, and this journey is all about the country of Israel. But here's the catch. We're not actually on our way to the Middle East. Nope, we're headed south to Latin America. Well, why? You're about to find out. The first stop, Guatemala. Guatemala, a country filled with people, culture, food, and beautiful landscapes. But this beauty comes at a price. On June 3rd of 2018, Guatemala's El Fuego volcano erupted, killing nearly 200 people and decimating communities, leaving thousands affected. It's, it's really hard to articulate what my eyes are seeing right now. The, the volcano, the, the volcano of fire, as it's called, is right over my shoulder and the pyroclastic cloud came down through this village at 150 miles an hour. And the temperatures inside of that were hundreds and hundreds of degrees. And what makes this so just devastating is over here, you see what looks like the bottoms of houses, but it's actually the tops of houses that have been filled in with that rock and, and lava. And so not only was this town destroyed, but it, in a way it was, it was erased, it was buried. I'm at a loss for words. This is Paula. She's a 27-year-old mother that narrowly escaped the eruption with her daughter. Todo eran gritos, unos decían mi mamá, mi hermano, mis hijos. Ahí iba mi mamá y mi hermana todavía, pero ellas no pudieron cruzar una cerca que había. Solo yo con mi niña, ella solita descalza, corriendo por la calle. Yo con todo el dolor de mi corazón tuve que solo voltear a ver a mi hermana y a mi mamá y ya no las pude ayudar porque en ese momento yo tenía que sacar adelante a mi hija. Incredibly, within 24 hours after the eruption, Israelis through the organization Israel were on the ground. This is Tali, Israel's country director in Guatemala. In the beginning, we brought also like basic supplies, hygiene supplies, and also we brought some psychologists to support these, the people that survive in this very uh, tragic moment of their life. Now we are in 16 months after the catastrophe doing uh, psychosocial support. In many cases, uh, we can detect and identify the physical damage that the person suffered from a disaster, but, you don't, but in many cases, you don't really see the internal damage uh, that people is suffering from. So, so why do you think Israelis are uniquely equipped to deal with the psychological trauma in a disaster like this? Mm -hmm. So in Israel, and specifically in Israel, we have a lot of exper experience in uh, working with the post-trauma situation. Also as Israelis, the Israeli society um, has went through a lot. Uh, and still is, in terms of our mental health and well-being. So we have developed a lot of strategies and techniques based on the Israeli expertise on how to support people to prevent long-term um, traumas. Y especialmente les agradezco a, a ustedes, a Israel, verdad, de, de tan lejos y, y tomarlo uno en cuenta. Y principalmente a mí en este momento les agradezco mucho. The truth is, there's still a long way to go in recovery for the affected communities in Guatemala. But through it all, one thing is for sure, Israel is bringing hope in the midst of such a tragedy. And a lot of people don't know this, but there's actually a really special relationship between the countries of Israel and Guatemala. And who better to speak on the subject than the ambassador to Israel himself? In 1948, when the State of Israel was declared and the U.S. President Truman was the first president to uh, uh, recognize Israel, Guatemala was the second. 70 years later, history repeats itself. I don't know who arranged it. Guatemala is again the second country in the world, again after the United States, to recognize Jerusalem as capital of Israel. So, Ambassador, the question has to be, why? Why is Guatemala always the first or second country? It's not only the love of the president, the foreign minister, the congressman, etc. The love of the people in the street. And they tell me, we love God. God chose Israel. Amen. We love you. 
We also met up with the son and chief of staff of the former vice president of Guatemala. Now, these two men were incredibly instrumental in the move of the Guatemalan embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, only the second country in the world to the United States to take that stand. Realmente la decisión que, que tomamos de poder eh, eh, ponernos a la brecha como nación es parte de la relación que tenemos con, con Israel. Es parte de esa, de esa valiente actitud que tomó el gobierno. Más de 70 años de celebrar lo que significa el, el establecimiento del Estado de Israel. So as you know, 24 hours after the Fuego Volcano disaster, you had a group of Israelis in the form of the organization Israel on the ground helping, and they're still here. So I guess my question as government officials, what does it mean to you to have a, a bunch of Israelis from thousands of miles away, but they're here, not only building that relationship, but, but truly helping Guatemalans in their time of need. El Espíritu del Eterno se pone en cumplimiento a su palabra, que dice que todo aquel que bendijere al pueblo de Israel, al pueblo judío, va a ser bendito. Sabemos que el mover a empresarios, a estudiantes, a profesionales de todas las partes de Israel, únicamente las movió el corazón de Dios en celo al cumplimiento de su palabra. It's time to continue our journey through Latin America. And right now, we're in Colombia, specifically the areas around Barranquilla, Colombia. Now, what Israel's doing here is a little bit different than what they were doing in Guatemala. So to understand exactly what's going on, we're actually gonna talk with the co-CEO of all of Israel, Yotam Polizer. Come on. In Colombia, our main focus is to support the refugees from Venezuela. We're talking about over a million refugees who came in the last couple of years because of the crisis in Venezuela. They're living in terrible, terrible conditions. They have no support. They have no access to education, access to basic services. A lot of them are unemployed. Um, so it's both uh, a humanitarian crisis that creates an economic crisis and a social crisis on so many levels. So why are they leaving Venezuela? They live in Venezuela because A, they're not safe there due to the political situation, and B, the unstable political situation created uh, almost a hunger there. Some people are on the verge of starvation and they really have no choice but to leave their home and, and look for a better future for them and for their families. They hope to be back if things get better, but at the moment, it's really, really devastating. We then had the opportunity to go to a school and meet some of the refugees from Venezuela. Es muy difícil que un niño de uno le diga, mamá, tengo hambre, y uno no tenga para darle. Es muy duro uno ver a sus hijos cuando están acostumbrados a vestir bien, y de repente no tener para uno vestirlo, darle, es muy difícil. Y por eso a veces emigramos y no es fácil. No es fácil porque nos juzgan. A veces nos tratan mal, gracias a Dios contamos con personas como ustedes y como muchas que también nos brindan la mano, nos apoyan y nos dan como que ese aliento para uno seguir adelante. La situación en Venezuela ha llegado además a tan lejos que han venido personas de otros países como de Israel a venir a ayudar a los venezolanos porque han visto la situación en la que estamos. Se le agradece mucho por la ayuda que nos han prestado y por el empeño que tienen ustedes hacia con nosotros, con nuestros hijos. Me la muy agradecida. How are Israelis specifically equipped to help in this situation? So Israel has been since 2001 working in 52 countries, including many um, refugee uh, crises. For example, the Syrian refugee crisis, the Yazidi refugees, um, refugees from South Sudan in East Africa. Um, so we have a lot of experience in working with this type of population who went through terrible trauma. And we know that there's no magic solution, right? It's, it's really a long-term process. And what we're trying to do here is to empower the community and to give them skills and tools so eventually they'll be able to support themselves. So our main focus here is develop local leadership 
within the refugee community. Working in the refugee context um, is so Jewish. Yeah. This is our own history. The story of the refugees are, is the story of the Jewish people. So we really feel this special connection and um, we're here in the long run to help. We ended our journey and talked with Israel's head of mission in Colombia, Juliana. She's done an incredible job of building community with the refugees of Venezuela. It, it's, it's incredible to think that six months ago, we're having this conversation, they're looking at me, who are these, who's this Israeli that speaks with like a funny Colombian accent? And six months later, we built a child-friendly space. We have impacted the lives of more than 150 people and I can call them my friends, you know, and uh, it just, you know, like every person that touches your heart, you know, like once you become vulnerable and the other person becomes vulnerable in turn, it just changes you, like there's, you, you cannot stop it, it's just the way it goes. Through tragedy, there is hope. Through adversity, something new is growing. Friendship. For the people of Guatemala and Venezuela, their story doesn't end here. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent people from his land to a land that has been broken, to people who have been broken. Because he is a God who cares, and so does Israel. Much is still being done to help the affected communities that we met, but I'm grateful we had the opportunity to tell a few of their stories. There truly is beauty in the midst of their most trying times. And there truly is a nation called Israel helping those in their time of need.